<laughs> Welcome to the Post Ride Podcast. We're here today with Jason, Jesse, and Cody. Uh, we've been riding together for only about a week now. These guys were out here for a couple weeks already. Uh, they rode for about a week before I got it out here, or got back out here, I guess. And they got to experience the low snow conditions this year as well. But uh, we'll just start off with some introductions. We got Jason. He's been on here before. Uh, electrician by trade and hardcore snowmobiler. Yeah. And then we got Jesse. Nobody knows who you are. So introduce yourself. I'm Jesse. Uh, I met Matt in 2018. Yeah, we met out here. Yeah. Actually, the first time we met, you poured oil all over <laughs> your sled. No, I didn't just pour oil you all over to my put sled. The lid I, on I forgot to put my oil, oil cap back on. I would have looked like such a goon. Like first, first uh, impressions. Yeah, first impressions, really good that day. <clears throat> it went well. Yeah, and that, oh, was that the same day that I got lost? No. No. Okay. Well, I didn't get lost, but you took ra- off by yourself. No, the the radio contact. <laughs> I can hear you guys. You can hear me. And I dropped into a hole. But anyway. That's besides the point. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> I, I used to be pretty bad with that. Still. Still no, bad. No. Still bad. And then over here we got Cody. Uh, OG Purple Princess. <laughs> uh, with the boys since 2020. Um, roofer by trade, as they call it. Uh, actually a siding guy. Own a siding company. Um, Same thing. Love tree roofer. riding. That's it. <laughs> Fell into the group, nice. When was your first time out to the to the mountains? Oh, uh, when I met you, twenty twenty. Um, Come a long way. I remember that first ride. Yeah, <laughs> fucking blew a sled <laughs> up right away, and then uh, bought the OG Purple Princess. Um, Clapty, Clapty. The rear shock was blown out of it right out of the shop <laughs> almost. Um, came a long way since then. Yeah, aggressive. Sure I actually have a story. First time I met Cody. Yeah. Oh, oh here riding. Uh, was Pillow Factory or whatever we call it. Oh, yeah. And that was when you most trapped yourself. Oh. <laughs> when he you lose goggles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you screwed up your handlebars and you were calling Jeff. You're like, oh, I need uh, whatever, Allen tools. keys. I need tools. <laughs> so that's the first time you, you met him? And we live up the street. They live yeah, four in the apart. same really? In the same township, really? up the street from each other. Never met each other before. Because there's like a whole group of like 20 of you guys, I feel like, and you all know each Very other. Very similar, but we're more getting reunited now than we ever were before hmm. can i tell a quick story about first time i rode with cody i'd love to hear it so i guess like i was into mountain riding a little bit before cody and whatever so they heard about the chick chocks and that was like a big thing so they wanted to go mountain riding so cody had a sks 146 me and, and yeah so me and jeff were gonna join you mountain yeah so we go to the chick chocks day one each of them have a 15 pack of beer in their backpack, <laughs> in their backpack, on their back. And yeah, I, but, but hear me out. He looks at me weird and he's like, you're bringing that? Like, should we bring more? <laughs> Are exactly. We exactly what he said. <laughs> yeah. And so, and that, that was an interesting day. Yeah. Experience the first day. Didn't get through any of it. Most of them blew up in the backpack Yeah, <laughs> or in the tunnel bag. Oh, Just man. exploded everywhere with my lunch. And So how many beer do you bring with you now? Mm, zero to two. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the days are two for pushing. Some days, if we're with the potatoes, two, three, not yeah. much. Tell he started off as a trail rider, eh? Yeah, you can tell. Yes. <laughs> started as a trail rider, <laughs> fell in love with the mountains. The views, it's incredible. You can't yeah. get away from it. You uh, do much trail riding these days? Uh, occasionally I'll go for chicken wings and beers with the boys yeah. on a Thursday night, but Just that's about hop. it with, with the turbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three inch With paddles. the mountain sled turbo. With the mountain high. sled, yeah. yeah. I, I gave up all the trail sleds, sold them all. So, hmm. so we got. Bring what you brought. And I guess there's nobody here that has a trail sled, eh? No. no. Nothing relevant. Old no. XER. Old, yeah. old iron. Jesse, did you even really ride in Ontario before? Yeah, I had, uh... Well, I had my 2010 Summit. I basically rode that every day for a year straight. I got laid off at work, and I just got paid to go sledding, basically. Yeah. That's about as pro as I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. Jesse doesn't really do the social media or anything at all. He's just 
He's out here just because he loves it. And he made a post. He did make a he post. Made his post. Here. I, I, I was very impressed. proud. <laughs> but keep but the followers happy. One post yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, you're just out here for for a good time. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I kind of uh, oh shit, what's the word I'm looking for? You just want to come out here and enjoy the kind riding. I'm jealous of that, honestly. Like envy. It, 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 I kind of yeah, a little envious of you at this point. Um, you know, I love what I do, but sometimes I'm I'm like, okay, you know, just to, to ride for myself for a, a week and just not film. I, I mean, I I love the filming stuff, but just to go out and no hang out with the boys, come back at night, go out for dinner, not have to worry about uh, getting out and edit film. for the next day. Yeah, no obligations. <clears throat> no obligations at all. It's 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 cool. So yeah. And then, uh, yeah, how uh, how'd you guys find the low snow conditions to start the year? As a scooty guy, I wish I had a player. So not gonna <laughs> he lie, he was cursing. <laughs> Nobody else uh, is gonna want to hear that, but it's the truth. Yeah, no, I, I they, agree. They handle easy. The the players is better in low snow conditions. There's no, no, I don't disagree with that at all. I do prefer the scooty in the deep snow. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the Polaris guys in the room well, would I say can, the same. I would definitely uh, go with this because I rode mats for a couple of days in Alaska and I struggled anytime we got into hard ruts or anything that's not deep. Just was not ready for what I needed to get that thing on edge. It just, yeah, especially not, when you're I'm not, not used I'm to not it. not used to it. It's yeah. just totally foreign. The power was great. Love that. The lack of bog. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but the thing was driving me. Yeah. yeah. That was it, yeah. I got I got where I needed to go, just with risk. Yeah. And uh, Jason, how did you like riding the low snow conditions? It was, it's been an interesting year, for sure. But we're kind of used to some of that stuff on the East Coast. That's true. I've, like, we can ride shit. We can ride the shit, and it's not too terrible when we were riding with a couple couple local guys they were like what are we even doing here there's only three feet of snow and cody and i are like yeah this is perfect this is great (laughs) and like i can see i can see where i have to go yeah there's a line yeah usually chick chocks you have no ideas you just kind of figure it out as you go i think the snow sets up a lot differently here than on the east coast too though it's found even though we only had two and a half three feet in places like i was still over over no here, when I was riding early season, I was still able to ride over a lot of shit and not break anything. Yeah. Oh, because, yeah, you're not going through it. You're, yeah, exactly. It's floating it's, you're, you. you're still bouncing over top of it. Whereas to, if I was riding that in Ontario, it wouldn't, wouldn't quite be the case. We mm-hmm. definitely had to look yeah. at terrain differently oh, because yeah. <laughs> you're not being, you're, you can't carry the speed through sections because you're hopping over logs and on the other side of the log is a giant hole, maybe yeah. just open to water. Like, you don't even know what you're going to find, so... It's way more technical, but it's fun. Yeah, I don't know. Keeps of fun you on your it. toes. I've, yeah. I've said that many times now, but uh, <laughs> did you like the low snow conditions, Jesse? That I'm used to it. I yeah. didn't mind it. You're used to it too. Yeah. A little bit hard on equipment. Yeah. A little bit. I lost an A arm. Oh, yeah. Just buzzing around the Alpine. I, it wasn't purposely just buzzing. I, I knew the driving was low snow was just flat light, caught me off guard, didn't see it just under the snow. and put me over the bars yeah, yeah there's been a lot of over very the bars. close calls with the arms i've seen guys just driving through the alpine and and they just uncover a rock that was like so close to yeah. taking out an arm well the boys back home just ripped off a whole complete front end yeah they seen the rock all day and then they got covered for a second drove over it ripped off spindle two a arms bye-bye yeah I, th- I think the parts shops in revy are <laughs> Loving doing it. well this year <laughs> Very well. Yeah. The only ones that love low snow. Yeah. And uh, so we've also taken a trip up to basically Alaska now. And uh, I, I had a ton of fun doing that. It was a great adventure. And these guys came along. They were down for the road trip, even though going into it, we, we knew there wasn't going to be good snow. And uh, I, it was I felt a little bit of pressure because it was kind of my idea. But uh, after the first day we got into Stuart, how how did you guys feel about the conditions? Like that one little meme where it said we drove eighteen hours and like what the fuck did yeah. we just get ourselves into? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, knew I knew it, once the weather turned around and we got some sun that we were going to see some really cool shit, in which we did. Yes, um, and we ended up finding wicked snow. So yeah, 
in yep. the end, it was awesome. But well, it's like day three, we found it's like the climate just totally changed. Didn't get the rain, and they got four feet of snow. There was a, a direct border almost from and day two to sun. day three with uh, Bluebird. Yeah. Having the sun there is so you key it to, 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 a, to a good time. Um, you know, not to say that there isn't good tree riding there. I'm sure there's lots of it. I just don't think we had the snow at the tree elevation uh, in most spots out there while the we were there. The depth was good. Well, the tree riding is like, yeah, what, just, 500 meters now? Yeah. Because we were like alpine at 800 Yeah. ish. Yeah, well, around, around, yeah, there's trees up to probably, uh, I want to say 1,200 in, in spots, but. Yeah, yeah, they they had way more base than we had. They had just unfortunately, when I booked the trip, the conditions were epic. Then booked the trip two days later, rains to the top for over a day, and uh, we're just like, well, we're committed. We we've paid for this Airbnb, and uh, it, the plan's set in motion. So somehow it always works out. <laughs> An adventure, nonetheless. Yeah, a bad day sledding is better than well, it's new terrain. Was, I love exploring, so it doesn't matter where we're going. We're like, it was cool <laughs> to see new things. Like that cave yep. was unreal, yeah, unreal. Yeah. Matt, what was your favorite thing about Alaska? One favorite thing, oh, man. That's for or northern BC. Sorry, it's uh, it's really hard for me to pick just one because like I I just love glaciers and ice caves and and seeing that shit. But also just the terrain and the snow we had, uh, just like there's features everywhere. It was kind of like overwhelming as to what you could do. And we had fairly decent snow to do it, but there was still some open holes in there. So we weren't just like bombing off of every single thing we were looking at because somebody found an open hole. Nonetheless, the last always day. finding stuff. But like you say, with the, we would need a little bit more sun. A couple more days, we could have set up some stuff because it's so vast. It's huge, the terrain. Yeah. It's, it's unreal to imagine I don't know. We can't even take it all we, in. It's huge. We honestly didn't even experience a fraction of what there is up there. So small. No. Because no. late in the season, they do some crazy uh, glacier missions up there where they do like 200 kilometer days, apparently. Just like yeah, that's huge loops. Jared was saying like they'll yeah. just get on a glacier and just drive for <laughs> 20 minutes straight. It get kind of boring. But it's just like the adventure and, and seeing the sights of, of doing that big trip is would be pretty cool. Yeah. Plus the uh, well the Corey guy that we had met he was with him he's already thrown down two seventy flip out there. Oh yeah. So there's so many features to kind of get after. You're also yeah. really remote there though, so it's like if do trouble. you want to get into super gnarly stuff and throwing big airs? Because if you if something happens, it's that was kind of my thing too. Like Braden came along with us and he He's eyed up a, a road gap there, and it was probably a decent setup, but steep. In the back of my mind, the whole time was just like, yeah, we don't really know where we are, what kind of you know yeah, we resources push we have here. Like to bail it's us, it's pretty out. small place. Like, yeah, we could push SOS on our inReach, but like, what is that? It's not the same as Revy. Like yeah, for no. response time, we don't know. I can't imagine. There was another group. Uh, on the bluebird day out there that they did get search and rescue to come and pick them up. So, you know, the, the resource is definitely there, but yeah, I guess that guy that day drove blindly into a open hole of some sort, yeah. blew out his knees or something Tough. bad. So Heli was able to fly and pick him up, but hmm. got to be ready for those all at all times. Eh, Big holes. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like they keep swallowing me so, up. Do you want to just tell us what happened there? Well, the boys sent me out front to break trail with the G5. <laughs> <That's how it laughs> <happened. laughs> um, You're on a mission on that thing. On a mission. That thing is pulling hard, and I'm going to lead the charge to the top. Uh, I mean, it's a rental, so you might as well. It's a rental, well. so I'm going to fuck gentle. it. I'm going to fucking send it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm chewing across. I'm kind of close to what I think is a bench. Good point. And I can't quite make it up the face, so I go around this knuckle, and all of a sudden, I'm well, I'm in a wheelie constantly because this thing's making power. Because ski-doo. Ski-doo. <laughs> wheelie. wheelie. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, it, I'm going backwards. I didn't see it because, I don't know, I'm in a wheelie going around a corner, and all of a sudden, the sled just fucking disappears. And I'm in a hole. I'm now landing on a four-inch shelf beside a waterfall, 
the sled is sitting on a small rock in a river. I'm holding on the mountain bar. I'm trying to make the best of it, laughing uh, while I call for help, wanting to take a picture of the situation, but I also don't want to kind of move too much and break my tiny little pad that I'm standing on because I don't want to be in the fucking water or sliding underneath the ice. Uh, call for Braden. Braden comes, throws me a strap, get out of the situation, and then uh, call for backup, start filling it in. Jason's on the radio telling me my sled's all busted and broken, <laughs> trying to trying to get me riled up. <laughs> and here I am stuck on the 146 in the trees. I'm just Matt, like... <sighs> Matt did not even make it to us to see <laughs> no. the situation. Yeah, no, I, I was temporarily delayed there. Uh, so, so why were you on a rental? Uh, you know, issues. Polaris issues? Yeah, uh, I want to say... I know the feeling, buddy. Was it Polaris There's, issues or uh, dealer issues? Uh, this one was dealer issues. Um, yeah. Well, maybe a bit of Maybe both. more so mechanic issues, not <laughs> yeah. so much dealer. Yeah. Things weren't put back together properly. Um, when uh, the motor blew last year and left some shit out and it ran like shit and, uh, that left me high and dry, so we drove a skidoo, thankful for Matt. Luckily, we brought, <laughs> brought a three spare. sleds on one truck, and uh, yeah, it was a long way to go without bringing a spare, so that was definitely the plan from right, right from the start. Well, something's always going to happen. Yeah. Somebody's going to break something, or something's going to fail. It's inevitable at the riding level that we're kind of going to. Well, uh, You're going to break something. It's it, it happens every single day. When you got six six guys, I, there's bound to be a breakdown. And Hugo had two sleds as well. He didn't have sled issues. He had truck issues. <laughs> no, his 9R was throwing codes. Too. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Players, thanks. Forward things. <laughs> but back to uh, Jesse, you asked what my favorite feature of Northern BC was. What, what was your favorite part about it? Probably all the mining infrastructure that we saw. Yeah. Like, that just, was... It's crazy to think that people were back there in the 60s. They lived there. They were living back 30s. there. Living back there, yeah. There's a town of like a, a thousand people in uh, the mountains. Yeah, it's crazy. That that's such a different life yeah. than, than what we're used to. Stewart is now 400 people. Don't quote me, but somebody in the town, an old guy drinking coffee with us in the morning, said it was 10,000 yeah. back in the day when it was yeah. booming, which is incredible to think where you'd put 10,000 in, in this tiny small. little town. Makes no sense. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of history around there. You can just feel it. All yeah. the old buildings and, like, say, the old infrastructure and being like, a port right on the ocean like that. There well, was an airstrip, what, 60 kilometers? In, in the, the bush. Nowhere, in the middle of the bush. In a valley in the mountains. Uh, Jason, what was your favorite part of Northern D.C.? I don't know. Uh, like, day three when we were just pounding all the cool deep snow stuff on the bluebird day we were all like, just so stoked was the best riding and stuff but yeah. like i was the same as jesse like just to see some of the old mining infrastructure and stuff like that and then the ice cave kind of blew my mind and i feel like those i bet there's a ton of those oh, kicking yeah. around there that you know you probably never would see but more exploring. Yeah. Think of how small that glacier was compared to the glaciers we were looking at in the valleys exactly retarded yeah yeah and cody what was your favorite part <sighs> the free <skidoo>. rentals <laughs> i guess <laughs> no I, I i'm a big th um terrain uh i love the terrain low elevation uh pillows and trees uh, i don't know just the buzzing around deep snow the terrain was cool because when we hit the deep snow it wasn't like meadow mashing like no, because we, there was features. Yeah, there, there was humps and bumps and it wasn't pre really, like, and It wasn't meadow mashing, but it wasn't tree riding. Yeah. Yes, it was a bit of yeah, balls. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was weird, different than what we do. Yeah, completely different. And the mountains there, they're just like, in the valley anyway, or in town, it's pretty much straight up. And luckily, they've built mine roads into the mountain. Otherwise, none of this shit would have been accessible Never. at all by no. snowmobile. And then uh, once you're, like, kind of up in the mountains where, where the mine was, there's hardly any trees up there. They're just kind of sparse. And just the ruggedness of the terrain. Just, like, even looking at it on camera, it just looks so cool. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Would you guys go back up again? If we could time it for yeah. wicked snow, yeah. It'd be a last minute booking. I feel like I would go back, but maybe in the spring, It'd, like later yeah. in the year. That's what yeah, I like to do. Yeah, but March as well. or April, like when it starts tightening up and right you around there. Yeah, something bring like the that. race load? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's we just got finished a few really good days in Revy and <sighs> It's good, That's but tough to beat. It, yeah, but it's it just is. different type of riding. So it's it is. If uh, the snow shit here, you make the drive. You yeah. just kind of get it done. It, it it tightens up here in a couple days. Uh, we're lucky right now that it's been dumping. There's another storm coming in three days. We're we're leaving, but uh, we'll be back shortly. A couple weeks. Yeah, hopefully it uh, it keeps on snowing here. We got minus 30 temperatures tonight, and uh, tomorrow we've got some fun plans. Fun. That's what we call it now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to go up uh, in the bush pretty far and head back to Jason's personal belongings he left in the bush and <laughs> kind of pick them up and bring it back to town. <laughs> yeah. so what happened up there, Jason? Uh, we're pushing some terrain. That I, well, I guess you you guys have been in there before, but... We decided to go for it yesterday. Late in the evening. It was getting later in the afternoon, which was fine. Uh till I had a clutch bolt failure. <laughs> bolt sheared off inside the crank. Primary clutch flew off during a wide open pull up the hill. Yeah, I wasn't standing too far away uh when it happened and at first I thought it was just oh, a hopeful belt blow. And then I'm like, Oh, it's kind of unusual for players and then I the sounds afterwards, it just <laughs> kept going. Like, like the clutch was just spinning in the side panel, and, and the rain gear was grinding on stuff. That's exactly like, what uh, it was. Jeez. That was the sound of money just spinning around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A roulette yeah. table inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so then, so. yeah, broken. We're like, well, let's come up with the plan. We, we talked about towing out for a couple minutes, but in the conditions that we had, it uh, would have been really tough. So. The truth is, we just wanted to double ride Jason. <laughs> you guys took your turns. We wanted to. So we wanted to tag so team Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no towing. I don't think. I don't know. Towing wouldn't have been an, an option. We would have had to shovel there. a mega I think bench. It, it, it would have been possible. Like I have done it before. I'm, I'm not lying, but it required a lot of shoveling, and we went out a different route. So. Just drop down to hit the river. Follow the river till uh, you hit the highway. We just took a lower cut block out and, and uh, got on the road. But, yeah, <laughs> we got out late enough that if we had to tow a sled out of there, we probably would have been out at, like, midnight, maybe later. And, like, we were dealing with some tough conditions, like deep snow. And cold. it was pretty cold at yeah. that point. Like, it really it's dropping off. really dropped. It's minus 15 in the valley at that point. I think it was, like, minus 25 to minus 30 up in the alpine from looking at the at the weather when we got back so yeah it's not a night i would have wanted to be out there late we would have been working hard to get it out of there and probably not have been too cold but yeah no there's just a lot of factors you got to think of like uh what if someone got hurt while we were doing that yeah you know like just it's not worth it yeah so we uh we started uh scoping out a, a heli spot and the first one i went to uh is where i had service luckily called the the heli company and talked to them for a minute and then i'm kind of second guessing my my decision so i i go scoping for a new area for helipad i i go down to the spot and i ra- i radio i just say oh yeah this spot looks better but i don't actually like ra- wait for anybody's reply or see if anybody heard me and i, I start prepping like a helipad then i go back up and the guys have already towed the sled over to the original helipad because that was my original plan and then we like discussed it for a few minutes and we're like okay we'll, we'll just set it up here the sled's here running at daylight. this point it was already yeah it was, get, to get it was dark. starting to get dark so we uh make a helipad level spot it's on a bit of a slope and the trees aren't super open so dallas who's flown out a couple sleds before not to put the blame on anybody but he's like <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no, it, no problem for for sure uh, the, they'll be able to fly into this which the group consensus was, you know, that it, it should, should be, be okay, fun. right? Yeah. So 
And all of us are super experienced heli. Yeah, right. Pilots. We've we've been flying a long time. <laughs> we don't have so a clue. We have. <laughs> uh, yeah. So today, the heli went up there to land, hook up the sled, and leave. Unfortunately, he wasn't actually able to land. So now tomorrow, our mission is to head back up, and he's just going to drop the hook on, and we're going to hook up the sled, and then he'll lift it out of there. So why couldn't we have done that? Because there was no heli available yesterday. Oh, yeah, we were out of time. And it was late in the day, right? It was like They would have had to send it right away. Yeah. And yeah, they're pretty You guys busy. have to carry the... We have, we'll bring the slings in the lane. So I guess we would have had to pay for them to sit there, throw the slings down, time to strap it up or sling it. Yeah, they can't really throw slings down when they're in the air, I don't no. think. so. Too dangerous, no. getting the props. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. Asking for a friend. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just no. I don't. That wouldn't work. But uh, that'll be your your first heli flight, eh? Yep, first one in I don't know six six years. Six years. Yeah, it's not bad. I've been towed out before, but you put a put a story on your Instagram of your your broken snowmobile. Oh, yeah, we should mention that. Yeah. So <laughs> I was chronologic. What, what, what chrono? Yeah. Chronologically, yeah. Timeline. Going, doing you know, the day. Gone through my story like posting taking videos of how the day's going just like every day and uh i broke a clutch spring so i had a video of that and then moments later seemed like um that's when the primary bolt broke so i took videos of that and um, when we got back to service i tagged polaris snow in it and uh wouldn't you know it they reached out to me at, at first they just liked the story <laughs> and it's like, hmm, <laughs> that's weird that they'd like this story about my Polaris sled <laughs> going down. down. But uh, sure enough, they we we talked back and forth, and uh, I already have a case number. Like, they, they yeah, got my email. We're, we're all hours. set up. Like, they want to figure out what's going on. With and you don't thing. even have the sled back. The sled's still on the mountain, but, like, <laughs> they're trying to get to the bottom of it already. J- so Jason couldn't even find his VIN number to give them. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look at my insurance slip. Yeah. Do you think they'd reimburse you for the heli flight? I really doubt it. Yeah. I really doubt it, but I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. You can ask pretty please. <laughs> <laughs> please, players. Uh, yeah. yeah. So No, but that's pretty cool. I, I've never, never expected to see that. But no, especially not over Instagram. You don't expect a not at all company like that to, to reach out. So that's at least good to see that they're trying to put in, put in the effort even with their products being um, so reliable the last couple of years. Well, yeah. at first, just with the like, it's like, is it a good or are they like, yeah. what are they yeah. doing with this? No, and I and I had a lot of feedback from other people uh, also having issues. Uh, bolts are still falling out. Bolts are still breaking. Yeah. Well, clutches, I don't know if anyone reached out saying their clutch flew apart, though. So maybe that's, no. that's a positive. Yeah, so it sounds like according to... D- to Dawson, the player's master, retorque your clutch. 250. Every 250 miles. and uh, Replace it 500. Four miles 500. or kilometers? He says miles. He's, he works in miles. Oh, he's so. American. Okay. But he's yeah. Canadian. Yeah. yeah, well, you know. Those, he's those, by, those old player's okay. boys are... All, 500 all miles. miles, right? So I... So my 2024 that the bolt broke on, I had 500 800, 800 kilometers. That's exactly 500 miles. So... Yeah. That's the expiration on the bolt. <laughs> Done. I... Should go look at and see what mine's at because it's. I bet. Oh God! I, you're not <laughs> you're taking it tomorrow. I'm not <laughs> taking it tomorrow. No. I should I honestly Dude. should just. <laughs> That'd be a good video too. <laughs> down Blair's is not when it's minus again. thirty. Yeah. If it wasn't yeah, gonna but be you minus, you still got another snowmobile though. You're gonna take the nine R. Oh, another player. Which is another player. Ooh, good luck with the finger throttle. What mm. sleds are you taking if you're not taking the pl- two Polaris's? I would like to take a Polaris. Yeah, I'd no, offer you, you mine, but players. you don't want it. Thumb throttle's ready. You just got to get it out of the trailer. <laughs> just turn the finger throttle around. It's no problem. Or just put it back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Matt's, Matt, Matt's rentals. We'll figure yeah. this out. <laughs> we'll get it yeah. set up. And they start charging. Good. <laughs> Fine by me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, your Polaris also broke on your last day of riding for the stint of the winter, eh? Yeah. You made it, though. Yeah, well, it's weird how everything kind of happens. We were on the mountain. I was just changing my clutch spring, and Jesse's got service. We're supposed to fly out together. Um, 
it was supposed to be tonight, actually. And he said, oh, I just got a notice that our flight's delayed by a day. Yeah. And thankfully so, because now we got to do a rescue mission tomorrow. No, you mean thankfully so, now we get to do a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, do the rescue mission, come down from the mountain, drive to the airport, fly home on a red eye. So, <laughs> You got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your third one? <laughs> Oh man! No one. Well, he didn't bring me I one. Had to I turn brought two myself. Are you turn nervous down over there, or what? Like just chugging beer. <sighs> Jesse, how's uh, the reliability of your Skidoo been? Uh, I had a check engine light for twelve days. Yeah. No problems. No problems. It's been mint. How no. about the How about the drivers? Drivers not so mint. No. Uh, yeah, I had to get some new ones. But what was his nickname for a day or two? Slippery Skippy. Jess? Skippy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> A couple skips in the track, no big deal. And you replaced the track this year, right? Yeah. And you put on the composite M770, yeah, which, which yeah. is like 10 pounds heavier than the D track. It's, I don't know what the exact weight yeah. is, but noticeably heavier yeah. for sure. Do you think it skips more having that track or <laughs> it's just a driver problem? Uh, I never really thought about the weight. It could be being the on issue, it. but potentially, yeah. Yeah. And right off the bat, when I put it on, I noticed that the vibration is substantial. More. Yeah. Hmm. They're a durable track, but... Uh, <laughs> That's what I was going for. Yeah. Price and durability. Hopefully this one outlasts no. the, the length of time I want to own the sled. <laughs> well, have you ever put a timeline to any track, roughly? I've uh, never had to replace a track till this year when I broke the one on the 165. I've ha had pretty good luck. So, yeah, but that was just... a pure abuse on logs. Sorry, did you say you replaced that? The boys replaced that. <laughs> Jesse actually replaced... He's a track master. And, uh, Not by choice. Because <laughs> I feel somewhere anywhere around 2,000 miles. Here's, here's the wages for, for your labor. <laughs> I got to give it to Jason because he helped me change my drivers. I got to give it to Matt for a <laughs> rental tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, See yeah, how sure. that works? <laughs> No, but uh, the the Polaris track, like you have the 275 on your ears, right? Now so I have the three and a quarter <coughs> the on The three it, and though. a quarter is way more durable from, I have, from what I've gonna seen. We're going to try it out when we come back. Yeah. I'm super impressed with that track. It's, Everything about it. Like, except for the cost of the thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, you guys have no idea what that thing actually cost. What did it cost? You, it retails $2,600. No, come on. That's what it is. They gave me ten off. No wonder it a snowmobile. Twenty six hundred dollars for a series nine. Hmm. You can buy why three M seven seventies for that <laughs> yeah. price. Yeah, and you can buy close two, to it. Almost two Skidoo tracks. Well, not quite, but that's a thousand more than a Skidoo track. I think. I think even like uh, two years ago when I blew my uh, series six, and then you'd uh, let me try your boost the first year they came out. That was like twenty one hundred dollars at the time. Hmm. I don't know, just OEM tracks are retarded. Yeah, they're pricey. So how'd you like the three two five and the deep pad we've had the last couple of days? Yeah, it works well. Yeah. It, I actually found it worked well in the setup Set up snow, snow even. too. Yeah. Um bites? Yeah. It, it bites a lot more. It, it bites way better than the two seven five. Which and is then, weird. You'd almost think the opposite with the longer you would log, think. but I don't know why. Yeah. Definitely bites better. And then in the deep stuff. It paddles hard. Yeah, it carries carries speed. It moves you forward yeah. good, for yeah. sure. No, I'm super impressed with it. Love That's it. been it's been good for sure. You're dropping your players off at the dealer tomorrow, hopefully, and then you're coming back to get it in February, right? Yep, a I'll be back like near the end of February for coming out for weeks. another three weeks. Hopefully, yep. Nice, Jesse. This is it for you, right? No, he's got time booked off work. Yeah. We might hold him to it. <laughs> he's got to bring we'll Joe back with him. Yeah. Jerry, Joe. Two. Yeah, the original Jerry number two. Joe was salty right? about a comment that I made in our first podcast. I forget what I said. About being lost all the time. Right. So I was, you you didn't, I, I was I supposed to lie and say that he isn't lost all the time? Or what was I supposed to say? Yeah, I think he was just hoping you'd say sorry. Uh, you heard his feelings. <laughs> sorry, Joe. <laughs> you got to buy him that uh, that new Skidoo 7S display that you're running. Yeah. He yeah. needs the VR 7S. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, everyone in the house tonight was, it was like a uh, trail tech install party. Yeah. 
yeah. worked good. Yeah. We'll all see the, if they work the, on the sled. Th- the thanks for hooking that up for me too. <laughs> Track, GPS. You should just be my stay no. here for the winter and you in can house mechanic. Yeah. No, no, not interested. No. You don't make enough. He just wants a snowmill. Yeah. He doesn't make any money. More <laughs> fucking spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. More spaghetti, less working. So you think uh, you think Jerry's going to be able to figure out the trail tech? Okay. I, like he seems like, like a big a technology guy, it, isn't it? Well, as I long have, as he can have an eye where Matt is, like, it, okay, well, Matt's not going more left for or me right. To, yeah, it's more for me to watch him, honestly. Right. The like, only he'll, issue he'll be able to follow me a bit, but yeah. The only issue is on super cold days, it seems to shut off, and yeah. you get kicked out of the group once in a while, but it's not all the time. So it's that same with the seven S. It's not perfect either. No, I felt like the the trail tech is working better than than our seven S. Right. So. Yeah. I just have to buy the uh, the wall chargers for the the trail tech. I might have to just steal yours and then buy you a new one. Mine? Yeah. It's already packed up and gone home. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh yeah. 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 It's probably in Alberta somewhere right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it could have, but too late. Ah, it's all right. I don't, I don't know why they w- wouldn't sell it with a wall charger, but Weird. minor details. And uh, Cody, you're also done riding for this stint as well, but you're coming back. Mm-hmm. I'm coming back, so we're leaving in the morning. I'm going to Mexico for a week, cutting it short. It's too cold here. Uh, the old lady needs a trip, so we're going to go somewhere warm, go to work for, I don't know, whatever it calls for. Then I'm going to fly back. Nice. I'm leaving everything here. Truck, trailer, set up, ready to party, except i got to fix some snowmobiles. You're living right in your trailer this year, right? Eh? Big trailer guy. <laughs> Trailer trash. <laughs> yeah, the trailer park hot tub is fucking top notch. <laughs> Fits the roof for ammo. <laughs> <laughs> Cody's the smoky bear Julian from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> Walking around with a fucking glass of rye. Yeah. No, Kokanee or Coors Yeah, Kokanee, yeah. Um, yeah, it was cold last night, and I ran around propane, so that's the first fucking lesson learned. Did you... Did you <laughs> <laughs> Did you just forget to change it because you passed out drunk? No, I wasn't. <laughs> uh, I figured we change it a day and a half ago. Um, it'd be fine because I the first two weeks only took two tanks. So I figured within a day and a half I had plenty. But the cold snap really suck in the propane. Oh, yeah. Do you think it would be better to be proactive on a night that's going to be minus 30? <laughs> <and> maybe <laughs> just put a fresh tank I in? I thought I was proactive with a day in advance. <laughs> So I I had a tank. I just had to go at three in the morning and put it on in your underwear. In my underwear, three in the morning at minus thirty. Sweet. Yep. Jason, how how's your uh, your trip been overall? Have you accomplished things you want to do, or you feel like it's just been a difficult year to get shit done? Uh, I don't know. I didn't have big goals going into this year. Honestly, I just more or less wanted a holiday and yeah. Well, you've you've had a tough year, eh? Yeah, well, I've been busy. Been busy, but uh, no, this was just kind of holiday, hangout time, do some sledding. I knew the snow wasn't there for for yeah. the big stuff, so no, nope, I'm I'm fine with what Wait we did. Out. But well, maybe in February we'll do some cool shit. But yeah, you can't always just just chase the the big airs, like no, nope. especially no this time the, of the, the risk to reward. It, you know, you got to weigh that in, and yep. for you, it's you know, is it is it worth it? to try and be doing 270s right now and not right now no look at e-man <laughs> poor e-man we have a clip of that what <laughs> maybe you should yeah put that clip in yeah here. i think so might have to after you Sorry, get him E-Man. after you get him saying no budget no budget huh? no budget <laughs> drywallers <laughs> oh, E-Man. oh shit you okay? I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, have you have you enjoyed your your trip? Yeah, I was when we first got here on day one and two was good, and then day three the snow was kind of shitty. Started to set up on us. Yeah. I was wondering what I was doing here this early. Yeah. But uh, in the end, it all worked out. I'm yeah. happy with it. Got my fix of the deep snow. And he's good for the year. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. My sled can't handle more than two weeks. I got oh, yeah. broken idler wheel, Spray check bar. engine light oh, that I don't know what's going on. 165 under it, and you're going to be good to go. 
Maybe next year. Yeah, from we'll a guy see. that only likes deep snow coming this early, I'm like, yeah, I put my head down just for you. I'm like, oh, this poor guy. Well, who doesn't like deep snow? What well, if likes deep snow, but you're like, I'm not coming unless it's good, and then you bail out on a month of work. Yeah, well, the main goal is to just maximize the vacation, the, the amount of good days for the amount of time I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like we had a couple good days. We had a lot of questionable s- snow conditions, too. Yeah, early season, that's why it I is try what not it to is, come yeah. early but season. But you figure December would just be nuking. So it's to try to plan your holidays early, it's tough. So next year, I think I'm just I'm riding on a whim. I'm not planning holidays. Yeah. And... It, I'm just going to, whatever. if it's early December, I'm just going to come up and set up camp, and it is what it is, because trying to plan around. It's also hard to run a business. Uh, very. Now we'll be we'll be set up shop here for a while now. we got all the Jerry's in the house upstairs partying. And yeah, playing cards and talking shit. Doing hot knives. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> That'll be entertaining for you, Matt. Uh, that's probably going to change your riding planning a little bit, eh? The hot knives? Yeah. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, going to be a big big change in pace here for the next two to three weeks, having uh, like four Jerry's out every day. Three, four. Anyway, and uh, my brother is here this weekend. He'll be riding, so that'll be fun. But uh, it, it'll, from from the start of the season riding... Keith Curtis. To, 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 <laughs> to Jerry <Ontario>. riding... <laughs> <laughs> to the Jerry's, so but like I enjoy it all. It's just it's uh, sometimes I forget how much you have to, to, to kind of adapt your your plan for the day. Like your dad's been kicking ass, I will say he's, yeah. he's doing well. He, he was in his head a bit, but you know we got we got him up yesterday into that zone. So uh, that's that's a pretty gnarly. He's been spot beating Jesse too. lately. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I'd be I... in my head too if Matt was fucking yelling at me saying I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd blame it on his 165. Uh, I think quit, it... quit being a bitch. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he. That's the exact same thing he'd say to me when I was a kid. So. Keep up or perish. Yeah, that was what he always told me when we were riding. Is keep up or perish. He just, so he doesn't like hearing it now. No. <laughs> Tables have turned. I just like how, how on the deepest. Day of the year, <laughs> Blue and Bluebird, Bird. we go into the bush and t- to build a build road bridge. over a bridge. But it was <laughs> build a bridge cold. over a creek. Yeah, it was su- super cold up in the Alpine, and you know I still had a, a ton of fun minus some hiccups throughout the day. But uh, you know it's not just always going to be about well, trying break, to chase the Bluebird deep snow. Cause the breaking the trail was fun too. That was super. Oh fun. yeah, I, I enjoyed that jump in the ditches and. Smashing willows. Yes, or slightly bigger than willows. <laughs> Two plus. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's been a uh, great rhyme with you guys. Going to miss you all. Hopefully see you back later in the winter, and uh, we'll jump on for another podcast. I'll Sounds buy good. the plane ticket. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to drinking with Jerry's. Yeah, all drinking right. with Jerry's. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.